Welcome back, MTG Joe here, uh, playing a brew from Josh Collins on Twitter. Uh, they got up to 126 a little bit ago on the Mythic Ladder with this blue-white Thassa mid-range blink deck. Um, so it's kind of built, we played something similar on the channel when Theros first came out, um, but it's basically built around Thassa, being able to blink creatures and get the enter the battlefield effects recycled. Um, so you're pairing it with stuff like Charming Prince to gain life scry or have Cascading ex Exile and Blink, Fibble Thip to draw cards, Guard Mage to draw cards, gain life. Uh, there's a couple one ofs in Forbidding Spirit that plays like a prison like a prison effect that costs two more to attack, Ghostly Prison. Illyrios, we've had in our version, just makes tokens. Uh, Fortefs uh, works well with the counter spells and kind of screws up Control's plan. Uh, this version is going heavier on the Cavaliers. Uh, Cavalier can blow up stuff. Uh, gives them the tokens, but with Teferi you can bounce them. And it's also just a 4-6 Vigilance. It brings back enchantments when it dies, so it can either bring back a Thassa if it gets discarded, or Elspeth Conquer's Death, so you can get the nice loop going. Conquer's Death can also rebuy any of these. And then this deck also plays a Dream Trawler on the top end, a couple Agents of Treachery, and then it's got four board wipes main. Um, time wipe I can see making sense because you can bounce your own creatures. Plays well with Dream Trawler to give you your threat back. Uh, Planar Cleansing is interesting. I want to see how that plays out. Um, if you kill your Cavalier, you can get back your Conqueror's Death, which can then kind of reset that. Uh, 26 lands in this deck, I believe. 26? 26. A uh, bunch of castles in here. Uh, interesting as well. They're opting for three temples, so we'll see how that plays. Sideboard wise is pretty clean. Um, you got your Devote Decrees, you got your uh, Disenchants, and then Mystical uh, sorry, with Mystical Dispute Veto, and then another Dream Trawler. So pretty straightforward uh, in terms of what we're trying to do here in the sideboard. Uh, just making sure the mic's on. Ran the other ran a stream the other day for an hour without realizing the mic was off. Uh, it was or not a stream, but like an offline video, so lost all that video. Um, so we're going to play some games. I uh, haven't really had a good run this month getting to Mythic. Nothing's really winning out, so we'll just play the ladder. I can't get worse. Um, so we do have the tournament on Saturday. Uh, it is the Mythic Points Qualifier Championship-ish, not the full one, but the one that gets you points for finishing in January top 1,200. Um, probably just going to run Doom Foretold. It's the deck I'm most familiar with. Had a little bit of success with Mono Red. I just hate the pay play patterns. Um, it's pretty draw play dependent, and you don't really have many catch up mechanics. There's certain games you just kind of lose. Opponent sticks a big life linker, um, or just sequencing. Like I 15 my Mono Red opponent, and then they came back the next turn and 16 me uh, to win. Uh, this hand is fine. Charming Prince can help smooth out our draw. And I feel like having Thassa early in this game is going to be valuable. Alright, blue-green. Could be a couple decks. Seeing a lot more team or adventures. Let's just scry here. Don't think we want either at this point. Agents a, why, a ways away. Shock here can be Growth Spiral. Hey, Quantum, how's it going? So let me set up my Scry first here. This could be Team Wreck as well. I think we just bought him. Um, I want some more action. So probably Team Wreck, the adventure deck doesn't play. Really, I haven't seen too much of this deck actually. I played it once on channel, but they're playing like Brazen Borers, playing more just a blue white mid range. Um, they're playing like Deputy of Detention. This version's a little bit more board wipe. Yeah, so they have the wreck here. I mean, we're, we're here to jam Thassa. They can have a counter here. Are they Growth Spiral? Maybe Mystical Dispute? 
Okay, they don't. And then on our end step, we're going to blink the fibble fit. Okay, so they got the value there, but we have a back of fibbles in hand. Second reclamation could kind of. So let's play fibbles first, see what we get. Another land. You know what? I should have conquered death there. Made the mistake. Another dragon fire. So if they don't have expansion. We might be able to do okay. They can just scry here. It's kind of annoying because it blocks us right now. And I probably want to prioritize taking one of these off. We have a counter. All right, well, they got the counter there, no attacks. Blink here. I think we want to try to get a better draw going. Cavalier is nice. We can blow up technically both these reclamations. Arrow. They do have enough to escape it back, and that's going to draw them quite a few cards. So I think what we do is we do this, blow both of these up, and then block the Uro. Double block on the Uro if it attacks in, and then get back Conquer's Death to exile it. They're getting to the point where they could just like naturally explosion us. Post board, we get a bit better. We have like vetoes and stuff. Do you get a bunch of three threes? Well, that's probably okay. If I have a board wipe, then I can uh, deal with them there. Could be Brazen Borrower Bounce. Actually, just think we do this this turn. Because Conquer's Death can exile this. Otherwise, I don't have a target for the Conquer's Death. And this at least puts something into my graveyard. They might just have explosion for five here, which would also do it. Oh, they just got another crisis for seven. Time wipe, time wipe. Show me the time wipe. Not quite there. So let's exile Uro. Play out a land. So we're not quite dead yet unless they have explosion. But we're pretty dead.
we can start tapping stuff with Thassa. But we're like any burn spell from dying. Drew a lot of lands this game. Yeah, they had it. Those Scorching Dragon Fires on Fibblethip came up pretty clutch. Uh, in this matchup, Dispute's good, and probably the Disenchants. Do we want Veto as well? I don't want to play too heavy. Like the Disenchants, we can be proactive even if it resolves. Um, Arios, and this isn't that good. Planar Cleansing is probably fine. Conqueror's Death is good in this matchup. I'm going to cut a Cavalier. I do like these as earlier threats. What else do we cut? Maybe shave down two disenchants. No, but it's probably worth getting that off. Maybe. So planar cleansing versus time wipe. Shave down one. Their crises can get bigger, so that's probably something we want to ignore or avoid. And Conqueror's Death is still reasonable, but they'll probably bring in counters. On the play, I like Taff, so let's just do it like this. Maybe I should have cut the Mystical Dispute down one, because the problem is they generate so much mana if they can get Wreck down. This hand doesn't do much beyond Charming Prince. I think we mulligan. Oy. Well, that's just all the lands. Feel like we're doing the do nothing and die. Problem two is, uh, they probably bring in like mystical disputes in this matchup, which hits a lot of our key things. And if they can go reclamation, well, the nice thing is they shouldn't have reclamation this turn because they didn't grow spiral there, but they do have the mana up. I'm gonna play out guard mage here. This is more important late game, and if this resolves, it draws us a card. Okay, they just go for the scry. Hopefully this is just like an Uro. The best would be Mystical Dispute, because then I could have five mana to resolve this Thassa. Nope, they got it. Ooh, that's good. So I'm actually gonna wait for them to tap out and then I'm gonna disenchant. Take that off. So we don't get to progress with Thassa, but I think that's a fine trade-off. Of course they just have another one. Same plan. So I'm gonna wait for them to make their decision without them knowing we have the disenchant and then disenchant it. I'm allowed to have another one if they have another one. Is 
This could be a crisis here, which is pretty bad. If it is, then I just time wipe. Kind of hope it is. Okay, so that's not bad because I can crisis. Uh, do I take the turn to set up Thassa? No, I think we take their threats off the board. If they play out a singular threat, I can jam the Cavalier. They can Uro and play it back. So again, hope that their turn is just cast this Uro, remain tapped out, and then I can Cavalier it. The cool trick too is if your opponent doesn't have permanence, you can target your own Thassa. So here I'm going to just... Well, I think regardless we're going to scry because we want to see what's on top. Another land. It's interesting. I think we keep that on top because it means depending on how they tap out I can agent. Could be chemistry's insight. No, nothing. I think we jam. Ooh, Teferi's nice here. The fairy into seven mana. Because the fairy forces the, their counter out of their hand. Okay. I know my responsibility. So also just bounces her. So they get the redraw, but. They need like a Scorching Dragonfire to take out the Teferi. I have a backup Teferi in hand. They get the card draw for row, but we're not gonna immediately win this game. Interesting, they brought in Fry. So another land makes us go Teferi and Cavalier. Otherwise, we can just Teferi. Okay, so they tapped like that. Okay, so I think we... So I can start stealing their lands, but I think we just start setting up Teferi here and try to steal their Uro next turn. So this is indestructible, this gets blinked, and then we get back and then target our Thassa. So we get 10 power there. We don't get anything back, so they get a bit of utility there. So here, I'm going to start stealing their green sources. It gives us uh, some value. So I will take that. Uh, to fairy, I'm going to plus again. It takes it out of fry range. This also makes expansions explosions worse in the future. Okay, they 
phrase in here. And they set up the wreck. Don't think they can quite explosion me out of the game. They may have a counter, but we can use that to bait on Teferi or to have them target the. Because the thing, too, is if they don't have it, we can steal their reclamation. I tried team a wreck. I found too often, like when you go off, you go off, but most of the time I just kind of dirtled and died. So let's attack first. Then I'm going to try to bait out the counter with Tef. They may just flash in Brazen Borrower here. And then I could Conquer's Death this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so I can't pay for that, which is fine. But I can Conquer's Death this nonetheless. And then I just want to scry here, set up my draws. Uh, Fibbles, kind of low value, but can draw us a card. They have a removal, doesn't do that much. I think we put that to the bottom. Yeah, just <laughs> avoid tier one decks and you're good. Do this. I think Teferi is something that's reasonable. Make Furrow here. It does take him out of green mana. I can also just tap this out of the way and then keep attacking in if they try to counter my Teferi. Make Crisis 4. So that makes Mystical Dispute cost more. Yeah, that's is great when you get her going. Um, so here I can bounce the Uro, but then my, and then I can hold up protection for my Teferi. They're also at 19 cards in library. So here I have enough to tap and then tap again. So I can apply pressure here. So 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. Uh, so I'm dead either way to an explosion if they have Wilderness Reclamation and they have a way to get rid of my Teferi. So I think we... You know, it's safer this way. Yeah, we're creating our own. I want to steal the Reclamation so we can use it. It's fine. We always have this time wipe as a backup.
So let's tap down this. Other than Brazen Borrower, they don't have a clean way of dealing with Thassa, which is nice. I think we go up the full Disenchants and then go down the Mystical Disputes. Okay, so they bounce that back. And they go Brazen. So what I can do this turn is I can tap down. Let's just set up no lands. So with, with time wipe, I can uh, take care of them. So let's just do this or make it not as obvious. So top you down. I have enough for time wipe after. And then time wipe brings this back to my hand. So let's set up the scry here. Don't want either of these. So I don't want them to get the Uro trigger. Just because it would gain them some life. I'm trying to beat them in the damage race. And then if they just play out this Uro, like they don't have enough to escape it back anyways. This game's going pretty long. Fifteen cards in library to R thirty six. Could be they're just trying to put enough in the graveyard. Okay, they fry. So that's likely Brazen Borrower that's coming down. Which isn't really enough to pressure us. Um. Dispute doesn't do much at this point, so let's just keep Cavalier on top. Uh, so I can tap down Brazen Boar and I can make a token. So let's keep the island in hand. This is likely where they flash and borrower. Because I know the Cavalier's on top, I'm just going to gain the life. We're just going to try to go for the long game here. Just so it doesn't do something funny. And then I can make a token as well. Okay, they're just going to try to combo us. Probably have enough. Ah, oh, that's so stupid. So that's 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27. Man, what a way to go.
you play it perfectly and then they just kind of naturally boo maybe we should have been more aggressive just gaining life let me just give arena a quick reset we'll fire up another one should have had that Because that turn, we would have gone to 21. Like, we went to 21, and then we gained some more life. Maybe earlier on we do that. Let's run it for another one. That's the problem with Team Iraq. If you don't pressure them fast enough, they eventually just kind of... And, like, Teferi's not really the... It's a delay, but it's not the best answer. Uh, I'm going to keep this hand, fetch for white on one, because we can go Charming Prince, uh, Illyrios into Thassa. So this could be a couple decks. Uh, there's the five color Niv deck going around. There is Esper, obviously. Cool. Hit our line drop. We're just going to set up our scry here. Um, probably keep this. We're short another white source, but I think it's okay for now. Of note, even if they have Clarion, we'll have a turn before the Clarion to bounce this with Thassa. Either Black White Doom or Esper Doom, most likely. So that deck's actually probably problematic for us, just because it does force Thassa to be sacked. Yeah, it's likely the case. So although we can make another token here because they could have a board wipe the next turn, I'm more interested in finding a, another creature in case they do. Elite Guard Mage is perfect. Um, I think I do want the white source as well. Just because then that turns on Conqueror's Death if they have Doom Foretold. Because even next turn, if they go wipe our board, I play this, scry, they play Doom Foretold, I sack this, play Elspeth Conquered's Death, exile it. Okay, Treacherous Blessing. It's definitely a Doom deck. So the black white versions usually play heavier on the Cavaliers. Um, here, I want to have Conqueror's Death available in case they have Doom Foretold next turn. So playing into the board here is a little riskier, but Agent's not bad. Like we're short a land, but we have Conqueror's Death as a play next turn. Let's just redraw another card here. Because I can just steal their Doom Foretold or steal one of their permanents. Like, I can just take their castle here. Ooh, that gets rid of Elspeth. Okay, another agent. We don't really have much in terms of the graveyard. So I think I'm just going to scry this turn, try to find a land.
put a stop on their end step. Because the cool thing too is if they wipe the board, I can steal this and then it pops off for me the following turn. Okay, so I just doom. Scry here. We do have planar cleansing. I think we want to try to find an untapped land here. Perfect. So we'll attack in here. And then just steal this. So next turn, I can sack the agent of treachery and then get it back with Elspeth Conquer's death. And if they go cavalier and they blow up my Conquer's death, then I can steal their cavalier. And this is typically a matchup. Doom Foretold, especially the black white version, has a lot harder time against uh, counter spells. So this actually taxes them as well which is kind of funny. Okay, they go Blessing. Or I guess... Trapped out. So basically what happened was they Kai's Wrath. I had to Agent steal their Doom Foretold, and then they Kai's Wrath my uh, Agent of Treachery. So that gets at least the Doom off. I have a couple Conquer's Deaths here. I'm a mana short, so I can Conquer's Death to get back Agent that takes this off the battlefield. I think we just do that this turn. It's weaker to like a Doom Foretold. This version does get to play Blast Zone, which is interesting. So they Conquer's Death, my Conquer's Death. So I can Conquer's Death, their Conquer's Death. Which seems okay. Because then I could just bounce it back with Teferi. And then reset it. It's a permanent less on the battlefield and it doesn't tax us after. So I still get the reset if they have uh, Doom Foretold. And in this matchup, I'm like Esper. So I gotta deal nine points of damage. They can make ones with the castle. This puts a counter on it. Let's see how it goes here. Okay, so they have the Kaya here. They can start making tokens. Drawing the wrong half of our deck situation. They can put two more counters on this, putting it up to four. They can also make a token to start attacking in. They've also offset their life, so if they want to draw a card, they can take six. It's fairly aggressive, like we are a creature-based deck. And first chance I get for Agent. 
Okay, so they had a conqueror's death for our conqueror's death, which we conquer's death, their conqueror's death. Jeez. Drawing lots of lands here. Let's put an end step, we'll scry. Come on, draw a card, take six damage. Okay, so I just put another counter on it. Thirty-two. Okay, so Liliana looks to be one of their win conditions. My army will Both our conquerors' death are gone. Dream Trawler isn't that good right now either because the Liliana's negative. I gotta try this version of Doom. They usually play um, the two mana spell that you can sack an enchantment to kill a creature. So Guard Mage just probably where we want to start. And then I'm going to set up the Scry underneath it. And Thassa. Yeah, I'm cool with both those. So I go Guard Mage. Draws me a card. Go Thassa. And they still don't get any value out of the ultimate there. Jeez, lots of lands being drawn. So they can Liliana negative here. Oh, they just do that. Kill it, make some tokens. I'm going to put a stop on my upkeep. I think we want to scry here. Interesting they haven't cracked that yet. This is also an ultimate we need to be concerned of. So even just dealing with the damage, they have that to come. Jeez. So we got one more draw. Let me check the deck list really quick. Do we have an out? We have Planar Cleansing, and we have another Conqueror's Death. So again, just upkeep trigger. So maybe we should have not done that and then scryed, trying to find the out there. Jeez, just every land in our deck. Okay, that's an out. That is most certainly an out. I think there's too many lands in this deck. So they can kill this, and then I can get back nothing. So I'm going to target my own Thassa here. I'm going to put another upkeep trigger. 
24 cards. So smoother mana in the black version probably has a worse matchup against I guess it's likely a board wipe, just how they're attacking in. Surprised they'd even attack, they could have gained life. And if they had Liliana, same idea, you minus the Liliana there, just so you get the two card draw. Ah, that's interesting. Good play there by the opponent. I guess this is a cleaner answer against like mono red. It is your kind of doom blade style effect. Uh so I can Charming Prince and also activate Castle, so I think that's a fine draw. That lets me create a token as well. I can also probably just... Fibbles will draw us a lot of cards. Just set up our next few scries. Our life total's high enough that I'm not too concerned. This deck's not really gonna burn us out. Don't think we want second Fibble, so we can get rid of that. And we always have time wipe if they bring more to the board. Okay. That is something. So that gets rid of that. And they are going to be able to get rid of this time wipe out of hand next turn. Um, so they would just block ours when we attack. It's fine. It gets them to spend their mana. So let's attack in first. Get some to spend some mana. Like I could always just tap these after. They do have another one. Okay, so that's a land drawn. So we'll just blink here. They get to exile our graveyard, which is kind of annoying. We do have another Conqueror's Death. Okay, so it's just another Lion Drawn. So what I'll probably do is take the damage and then scry and then create a token and then I can tap down these if need be. Fibble Fips worth more to me alive. Okay, they go Kaya's Wrath. And they set up Doom Foretold. Very annoying. So that loses us that. 21 cards. So I think we need to prioritize the Scry here. Second Thassa is not that good on a board with Doom. I think 
we're just more concerned with how we set up our draws here. Yeah, there's too many lines in this deck. Cavalier of Dawn and Fiddles. So one, two, one, two, three, four, five. So I can do both. Which works out nice. And then I can always sack the Cavalier. And then the Cavalier can get back uh, Thassa. Actually, I could blow up Doom Foretold. I'm actually going to blow this up. Because I want to keep my graveyard. Could have done the Othakai as well. I'm not going to crack this because we bottomed a bunch of lands and I don't want to shuffle them back. This is on five counters. So I can pop this to blow up my Cavalier. Still think we're gonna scry on our upkeep. Try to find something. Opponents at 17 minutes. 20 cards in deck. Second Doom Foretold. So because we're going to lose the life anyways, and we're going to lose this Thassa, I'm going to block here. They got Kaya. So Kaya is a problem. This is a way they can win the game now. I need to dig for the Planar Cleansing. They get rid of both agents. So let's scry here. Conquer's death does deal with the Kaya. So if I play Teferi, so it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, I can do both. So I can Teferi bounce the token and then play Conquer's Death. Exile the Kaya. So bounce the bigger token, play this out, exile Kaya. This will be a distraction for them. Sixteen cards in library. Interesting. They didn't attack us. That seems odd. Thinning the library out further. 15. Just trying to find something 
Uh, guard mage into guard mage is sweet. It also just ups our life total. They took our agents, which kind of sucks. Conquers death, can. What can Conquer's death get? Can get back Thassa. Can also just get. Is this non land? Not mine. So we can't blow up our own lands. Probably just Teferi, just to bounce the stuff. Didn't realize we were, our clock was running. So they're going tokens here. Probably just go another guard mage to be honest. It does a nice job of being an evasive threat and then at least cycles itself. Because then I can play the Teferi and then bounce one of the guard mages. Okay, so there's that. See if they do any attacks in. I think we're just on the mill plan, so guard mage seems the best. So let's go guard mage here. So let's attack with this one, because I'm going to bounce that with Teferi, keep the one with the counters on it. Then go tough. So I can probably get some cycle going. So I can go Teferi again play out guard mage if I draw a land and then I can also charming prince I want to get out non-creatures because this will come into effect right on, get and that just puts a bunch of life on us we're at 17 they're at 12 could just also Cavalier, my own Teferi. That gives me enough. Nah. Let's just go Guard Mage. I came here to draw cards. Because even with this board state, our life total is quite high. Need to be mindful of the clock. This match has gone quite long. Um, so they can have, I'm gonna do this because they can have Othakaya. It's gonna die anyways, so I'll just take him off a token. But uh, I don't want him to oath Akai this guard mage. They could have always oath this one, so it's fine there. This taxes him for another turn from being able to attack. And we have planar cleansing. Um, so I think we just play this out in case they attack. Best turn.
opponent's hanging in here. We have Drain Trawler on top. I don't know why it's showing this. Rena's giving us a glitch. Missing white mana here. That's fine. We got Dream Trawler. That should close things out. I'd rather not show him the planar cleansing. We're at 10 cards. Living pretty dangerous. They're also nine. So their deck doesn't win quick, and they're pretty behind in this matchup, so I'm a bit surprised they're not just conceding here. Discard the Prince here. They have multiple spells to try to deal with Trawler. They're digging. You gotta respect that out of them. They might have a second Liliana. But even after all that, they're just trying the card and then they die. Yeah. Okay, so got them there. That one went way too long. So Disenchants are very good here. The Vetoes are also very good. Um, Dream Trawler is pretty bad against this deck. Uh, six cards to cut. Forbidding Spirit, don't think we need. Thassa will probably cut down one. Conqueror's Deaths are good. Cavaliers are good. I don't think we want the Time Wipes. Planar Cleansing at least has effects. Um, Aleros is fine because it leaves a token behind. I just want all the ones that cycle, so maybe cut two Charming Prince as well. Run it like that. Like agent if we draw it late is still value. And I think this game, because we're up, even if they win, we just try to draw out the game long enough for them and make them run out of clock. Twelve. I don't think this hand's very good. This hand's much better. Uh, the planar cleansing's tempting. I think we do keep it. It's a good reset mechanic. So we're at thirteen. They're at twelve. This does make it a little susceptible to discard spell. Fibbles is nice just as a way to cycle. Okay, and we got the disenchant. So I can Teferi bounce this token. Okay, it's just Elspeth's Nightmare. So, couple things here. Because this is going to pop off, it's going to exile something. 
So I think what I do this turn is I actually bounce this so they don't get a card from my hand. Next turn what I do is, because they also can't play Doom Foretold, they don't have a clear board. Okay, so they owe the Kaya, that's fine, because now I have Veto and Disenchant up. A double Veto if need be. Don't want them taking anything here. Nothing worth destroying here. So I'm doing this before I scry. I'm actually not going to play this out because this makes Elspeth have text. I could just make a token on the end step. Um, that's fine. I'm going to just disenchant it. I'd rather keep up Vito. Cool. So here... Let's do Charming Prince. Let's set up our Scry. Don't want either. So the interesting thing here is if I counter this or let it come down and then just cavalier it, that might be the better play, which I think we do that. Then Doom Foretold, get rid of that. They don't have Black Castle here either, which is advantageous for us. And Speak of the Devil. This lets us put a clock too if they don't have. Okay, so they just Kaya's Wrath here. We can hold up Vito here, which is nice. Leros gives us a token. Right. It's just going to get chomped. I want a flyer here. Um, I mean, that's fine. Like, we really just want to do it against Liliana. They can't make a token this turn, so let's negative to fairy. And then I have guard mage next turn with veto backup. This castle with a lot of life will be a bit of an issue, but basically just want to protect against Liliana or Kaya. This is all fine. Waste more of their clock. Play out our threat. It has evasion, so it can attack in the air. And then just plus that. Here we go. So 
So it's not the fastest clock, but it is something. Even if they drop Doom Foretold here, I let it go, I sack this, uptick this. Okay, that's cool. Just gives us another threat. It does make it weaker to this, so they can pop it off. But now we have Disenchant back up as well. And we got four minutes on clock on them. Yeah, so their their whole turn is going to be mainly around this. I'd probably play a field of ruin in here. It could screw up your opponent's scries. Um, do I care about this? No. Because I just counter like whatever. Because this makes castle worse. So I'll attack in. that so same thing here even if they doom foretold I can just uh, disenchant it so I think we set up the scry here Second to fairy. Let's me bounce the token, but I think we want something better here. Agent. Agent with Dovin backup. Seems pretty sweet. So do this. Steal their land. Because then that's basically the way they're going to try to win against us. Okay, so they tap out like that. I can bounce the token so I don't get that value and then I still have veto mana up so I can decide if I want to veto or disenchant here that prevents them from having two things out to deal with the agent so they can kill the agent if they want Fine, they can kill to fairy. They have to deal twenty six damage to us, and at any point, I can reset this board. Let them try it. We're really just concerned with an actual threat. I can make tokens faster than they can. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. I'm not here to do math. Come on, opponent, I gotta go eat dinner. <laughs> Is 
that enough? That's fine. Because I can just get them to commit. And then disenchant. Or uh, wipe their board with planar cleansing. Card range is sweet, just gains us some more life, draws us a card. And then we have Conqueror's Death, so if this comes back a second time, we can deal with it. Our life total is quite high. They can have removal, it's fine. Agonizing Remorse. No, thank you. That's where we draw the line. Elspeth's Nightmare. So I can't disenchant. So I think we just take the damage this turn. I'm just concerned if a Doom Foretold comes down. I want to be able to deal with the Doom Foretold. I think Backup Conquer's Death is fine here. Do I care about the land? Probably not. So this sets them back quite a bit in terms of tempo. They can bring the Elspeth back, but it causes them to rebuild. Come on, opponent, dinner. Probably gonna win on time too in this one. If you are going to fight, fight beside me. Let's take the one point here. So I'm gonna make a token this turn. Just to have some blockers. Okay, second disenchant's nice. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. No tax and turn. So I can deal with the disenchant if need be. Kaya, that's annoying. I like a good fight. Notice I didn't say so. so take out the agent. It is a bit slower of a win condition. But we can Conquer's Death that as well next turn. Then the... Okay, the Conquer's Death, my Conquer's Death. What do they have in the graveyard? No creatures. That's fine. 
Because then my Teferi can bounce this Conqueror's Death. Let's just get Kai off the board. Still have disenchant mana up, so it's fine. One. Okay, so that one's annoying. A disenchant for <laughs> these matchups usually are just like whoever conquers deaths the most. So I think we value the scry here. He wants some sort of action. Okay, Guard Mage is good. More just because it like insulates our life total. Just pass the turn. Twenty cards, twenty five, they're at two minutes. Oath of Kaya. It's fine, we'll just block with fibbles. Okay, so they got the second one. That's gonna be a problem. But like they're not dealing a whole bunch to us. Come on. So I'm going to hold the Cavalier for the following turn so they don't get it back from Conqueror's Death. Just pass the turn. sucks so we kind of got punished there they know we have the disenchants so they're likely not going to play out into stuff set up the scry here probably not going to attack I don't know what opponent's end game here. Considering they have to win two games in under two minutes. They really want to show us our deck their deck. Uh yeah. I think in this case it's somewhat impossible. Not for the speed that this deck plays. Are we good at top decking? Alright, you gotta have a Liliana. And then you have to try to win out. Okay, well, they got the Dispark. But that's just more to take Kai off. Appreciate the dedication. Bounce you, get Thassa, play Thassa, bounce Fibbles. 
Fast turn. one has got 50, so. I feel like we've like looked through our entire deck. Just between like the scry and then the Thassa and everything. You got 45 seconds opponent. Sure. Um, makes it worth it so if there's a doom foretold. You're just wasting your time. One more scry. One more scry. Just do fibs. Draw us a card. Let them waste their clock. Just go as quick as possible. My dinner is getting cold, opponent. Three, two, one. We done. We done. All right, I'm going to wrap this one up. My dinner is downstairs. Thanks for tuning in, everyone. Uh, I'll have this up on uh, YouTube tomorrow. Thanks for watching. Have a great one.